Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to talk about working with checkbox data in Rack Forms. So most of the time when we're working with data, we are working with simple values. Uh, text field is a classic example. We have a, a field that has a simple text value, and whether we're writing that to the database, to email, wherever, it's a really simple concept. It's just one-on-one. -on -one. It's one text field creates uh, one value. Uh, the trick is when we have something like uh, checkboxes. And the reason why is because checkboxes, by their very nature, can contain an array of different possible values. So by default, uh, when we're creating a, a checkbox, we're probably going to be doing something like this. We're going to have a checkbox, and we're just going to click these plus button to add values to our checkbox list, right? So whatever it happens to be. Um, the trick is when we want to start working with this data in more interesting and advanced ways. And so generally what we're going to do when we know that we're going to have checkbox uh, values is we want to take a, a, a small step back and think about how we can make it so that the checkbox data that we're using is easy to populate and easy to pull back out again. Um, and by far the easiest way to do that is to use the database. So I have a database program running right here, DB Forge Studio, and I have two tables, uh, Demo Sports and Demo Users. And what these two tables do, these are related, but not actually with real values insofar as we just have almost a symbolic link between these two tables. So the first table is a list of users and the sports that they like. And as you can see here, we have um, an auto increment field, so just one, two, three, and then we just have the names and then the sports that they like. The sports, you'll notice, is kind of this weird format at first, where it's just a one, and then it's like this weird symbol in the two. Well, the symbol is actually the pipe symbol, and it's generally on most keyboards right above the enter button. Um, and so what we're doing here is we're saying that this user likes two sports, one and two. So in other words, we're saying that the pipe is a delimiter between the values that this user likes for sports. This may sound a little bit abstract, but hopefully it makes more sense when we say that sports one and two are actually football and soccer, right? So this user likes sports one and two, and we're just using the ID to get the sport instead of the sport name. So we could just have football comma soccer, football pipe symbol soccer. We could do that, but we're actually using these uh, numbers right here. And in a lot of ways, we do that because that's smart database design in that we're saving space this way. It'd be wasteful to have huge lists of uh, text, uh, but also because it makes our job easier when it comes to running forms. And so what I mean by that very specifically is if I look at my form uh, that we have here, and by the way, this is a sample job that we can load in the editor at any time. This is called Checkbox Updates, uh, and it's under the, uh, the Builder section of Sample Jobs. Um, but what we have is we have the simple text field for name. So we're going to run this form, we're going to fill in the name, and the name then is just going to map to this field right here, this column. The sports that they like are actually going to come from this checkbox. And it's kind of weird, because you notice we don't have any options set in here, but watch what happens when I build the form. We actually have a list of values right here, football, soccer, baseball, tennis. And hopefully this seems a little bit familiar, because indeed that's the values that we have here. Football, soccer, baseball, tennis, right? So how are we doing this? Well, we're using a dynamic query. So if I look at this table in here, it's demo underscore sports. If I look at the sports checkbox here and I scroll down to its data source area, you can see here that dynamic query is set to yes. And the source SQL, that is the SQL that we're using to populate this, is select name comma ID from demo sports. Select name comma ID from demo sports. Now, why are we selecting two values? Well, again, the whole idea is when we submit this form, instead of writing the names of the sports, we want to use the IDs. Okay, again, we could do this where we're just using the sports name, but it's, it's slightly wasteful to do that. It actually makes our job a little bit harder, because again, what RAF Forms is going to want in the end is it's going to want unique values uh, for this. And the good news is about this is this is a very simple design pattern, which we can use for everything. So what I mean by that is if I actually edit this table here, the ID field is simply a primary keyed auto incrementing field that's an int, and that's very easy to add that, and then we just have the name of the sports. We don't have to actually think too hard about this. This could be the names of countries, um, and Rack Forms, as a matter of fact, ships with a, a table for that. So we have this, uh, where is it here, uh, FB states. So we have this table where we can actually do the same thing. Each state has a unique ID, and then we have the full name and the abbreviated name. So this this format of using this 
auto incremented field and then whatever the value that want is really popular and you'll get used to it soon enough. Anyway, the point being that um, if I look at this a little bit deeper here, and we're gonna use Firebug to do this, you'll notice that the label for this field is football, but its value is one. So you can see our value here is one. So football has a value of one. Soccer has a value of two. Now this is important because soccer has a value of two. Football has a value of one. What we're essentially saying is that when I query this, I want the label to be the name of the sport, but I want its value to be the numeric value of this field right here. To do that, all we have to do is select more than one field. And Rackforms even has a little helper right here where we basically say all items displayed as label value if possible. So in other words, the first field that we select is going to be the label. The second value is going to be the value. So in this case, name is the label and the ID, again, this field right here, is the value. Now this all hopefully starts to come together when I run this form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, say Bill likes football and tennis. And we'll go ahead and submit this. So we're going to do a simple confirmation page. And if I look at this SQL here just as a preview, what I said is said insert into demo users. Again, that's this table right here the name in the sports that they have, again, the name in the sports field, and that's just gonna come from this field and this field, so name and sports. So when I refresh this by hitting F5 right here, you see here's Bill, and here he likes sports one and four. One and four is football and tennis. If we look at our builder page now, there's a little bit of setup that we do to make this work. So, the builder form itself is a really simple update field. The key is, is name right here is an update field. But again, name is just a simple text box. So that's going to be really easy to see how that maps. Sports, though, again, because this is an array, needs to be driven by something. So if you think about it, when we run this form, Rackforms is going to go in and say, OK, so you're going to update the sports field. But what possible values does sports have? You have to tell it. And that's where this dollar sign sports comes in. If you look at our little breakdown of our parameters here, sports is the values array. The values array, dollar sign sports, is coming from this query module right here. The query module is selecting name and ID from demo sports. Now this may sound familiar, select name ID from demo sports. And that's because that's how we're populating the checkbox right here. Select name ID from demo sports. In other words, to populate the list of possible values here, we're using a select item. To populate the list of possible sports here, we're doing the exact same thing. Only now we've used a query module that's selecting name and ID from demo sports. Then we tie this all together by going to this field and saying that the values array is going to be this sports result set right here. And sports, just to be clear, is coming from the result set variable name. So in other words, in rack forms, when we create a form like this, we can actually say this is what it's going to be called. And of course, if we have larger forms, we need to keep track of this stuff. In this case, I'm simply calling this sports. And so therefore, when I have dollar sign sports return a result set, which is a database query, and we drive the possible values for this field, it's all going to match up. Now the beautiful thing about this, and I realize this a little bit much the first time you see this, is that now rack forms, because it has a nice delimited list right here, a nice pipe delimited list of sports, and because it knows where to look for the possible sports, it's going to make all the rest of the connections for us. And by that I mean I could run this form now, and Bill, remember the user we just added, likes football and tennis. He likes sports 1 and 4, which again match to football and tennis. So again, there's a little bit of setup, there's a little bit of background knowledge, but as soon as we know this, as soon as we know that we need to run a query to populate checkbox values, Rackforms does all the rest of that complex stuff for us, but it still leaves the door open to do more um, interesting logic if we need it. As a final little uh, conclusion then, I can actually take this repeater item right here, and if I scroll down to its user update mode here, I can set it to multi-row updates, and then without having to do anything else, I can simply run this form, and I could say that Matt likes all sports. I can hit update records. And now if I look at my database, once again, hit refresh, you're going to notice that Rackforms has just gone in and said one, two, three, four here. So, right, so it's kind of finished all this logic off for us, even when we need to do update forms. So that's our quick look at this. Again, this job is available. It's called checkbox updates. Um, we can run this form at any time that we want to.